if freedom fails. We'd like to take you on a visit to a town that doesn't exist, a town we call Springfield, USA. We'd like to show you how things would be in any American town if communism took over. This is the story of a communist America and what would happen to a man whose job put him in contact with any representative of a foreign democracy. Carlton Young plays the role of Michael Shepard in Delirium. Charlie. Here you are. Working kind of late tonight, huh? I might as well. I had to kill some time. At the legation. Some place to kill time. Well, you know of any better? Sure do. <laughs> I'm afraid my wife wouldn't approve. I was waiting to pick her up at night school. Oh. Guess that friend of yours over there is waiting to take you over. Got yeah, what friend? Been sitting out there in the car, watching the entrance for the last 20 minutes. That's all? Uh, I, I don't know him from Adam. Uh, besides, I brought my own car. Must be waiting for someone else. Yeah, must be. Night, Charlie. Night, Mr. Shepard. Night, final. Get your night, final. Sir? May I use your phone, please? We don't have a booth, sir, but you're welcome to use the one behind the counter. Thanks. Hampton University. Mrs. Shepard, please. She's a pupil in medical class. Sorry, sir. We are not permitted to pay pupils during session. Class will be over in 20 minutes, though, and... Then please give her this message. Her husband was delayed and won't be able to pick her up. He'll meet her at home later. Any particular time, sir? Uh, there's no telling. I beg your pardon, sir? Uh, just tell her I'll try not to be too late. All right, sir. Can I help you, sir? Oh, thanks. Just browsing. Hello. Uh, give me the police, please. Well, what can we do for you, Mr. Shepard? Uh-huh. You did ask for the police, didn't you? Well... Here I am at your beck and call. 16 precinct, Sergeant Roston talking. Uh, uh, never mind. I'm Lieutenant Caden. Here are my credentials. Police intelligence. Am I to consider myself arrested? Of course not. Then why have you been following me ever since I left the legation? Oh, merely a precautionary measure, Mr. Shepard. Precautionary against what? I don't seem to recall having asked for protection. Well, it was our own contention that you require... Uh, protection. Well, this is preposterous. I, I, I'm perfectly capable of judging I whether... I believe it'd be easier for you to understand if you were given the facts at the station. All right, then I'll come down there tomorrow. Well, we think it'd be safer if you'd come along with me right now. Safer for whom? All of us, Mr. Shepard. All of us. <laughs> are never quite the same. 
just as the cause can be traced to a variety of sources. As I said, delirium is primarily a mental disturbance characterized by illusions, hallucinations, and incoherent rambling speech. Some Oh, yes, Mrs. Shepard, you have a question? You pointed out alcoholism or the toxemia of any severe illness as being the primary cause of delirium. Can it be induced only by physical misfunction? An interesting point, Mrs. Shepard, because only as of late has medical science attributed many physical ailments to a psychosomatic condition, which of course in turn may lead us to believe that even a fever can be induced by marked emotional strain. And as you know, a fever is usually the first stepping stone to delirium. In other words, a poisoned mind can do as much harm as a poisoned body. And therefore, it is interesting to note that... <laughs> yes, I repeat, and therefore, it is interesting to note that all you lucky people are once again saved by the bell. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Professor Bradford. You're getting more devastatingly informative by the lecture. Mm -hmm. I should have brought an apple. Well, being the apple of my eye, you'll do nicely. <laughs> and you may quote me to your husband. Walk me outside and tell him yourself? Ah, the eternal triangle. They want to cause a scene, huh? <gasps> That'll be a day. Oh, I don't know. I'm sure Michael is quite capable of a jealous emotion. Who can tell? With the nervous strain he's been under, anything could happen. Nervous strain? Oh, Mrs. Shepard, your husband called and said he wouldn't be able to pick you up tonight. Oh, what did I tell you? He's found us out. D did he say why? No, he just said he'd see you at home later on. No, 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 none of that irate wife pose. He probably had to work late. Oh, not tonight, Chris. Will you please drive me home? Well, of course, Kathy. I don't mean to pry, Kathy, but why couldn't Mike be working late tonight? We had planned a special evening. Today is our fifth anniversary. <laughs> Couldn't you go a little faster? Well, not if I'm to get you home in one piece. Kathy, let's look at this sensibly. Uh, aren't you making a mountain out of a molehill? I wish I were. Well, everyone can be detained once in a while. Oh, but this is different. <laughs> Don't tell me old Casanova Shepherd is stepping out on you. <laughs> at least that I could fight. But this, this tension, this fear that's been hovering over us the last few weeks is something out of reach. A day hasn't passed that we haven't talked about it. Always wondering if it'll happen, when it'll happen. How long will they let him do it? You mean his job at the Swiss legation? Yes. Oh, I've asked him to quit so many times, but he, he simply won't hear of it. That's what makes him the guy you love. Yes. Yes, but that won't bail him out of Siberia. And as long as he's a citizen of the American Soviet Republic, neither will the Swiss legation. Oh, let's face it, Brad. Nowadays, being in the employ of anyone representing a democracy is practically treason. All right, here we are. Now, look here, Kathy. If things were that radical, Mike would hardly have been allowed to hold on to his job this long. This probably nothing to the entire situation. In a couple of hours, he'll be home and he'll be laughing about this. So, uh, why don't you go inside and wait for him, huh? If he doesn't show up, you can always call me. I'll be home. All right, Chris. Hey, hey, look over there. Isn't that Mike waiting for you? Where? Over there, right next to that fence. Oh, that isn't Mike. You sure? Well, he never wears a hat with the brim turned down. Oh. Uh, maybe I'd better take you to the door. I see our gloomy friend is leaving. Obviously a jilted lover. I wonder. Ah, <laughs> now, now, there you go again, letting that lively imagination run away with you. Maybe so. Only remember, we may be ordinary people, but these are no longer ordinary times. Good night, Chris. Good night, Kathy. Hello? Is Michael there? Uh, no, he isn't. Oh? Well, that's strange. He left here over half an hour ago. Who is this? And may I ask the same of you? You may. I'm his wife. His wife? His wife? Oh, I, I didn't know it. Uh, never mind. Hello. 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 <laughs> 
How'd it go? <laughs> like a charm. Fell for it all the way. Good. Call her again in about 15 minutes. Only this time, hang up the moment she answers. Keep repeating this every 15 minutes thereafter till I return. I'll be in the next room. Very well, sir. How do you do, Mr. Shepard? How do you do? I'm Captain Heston. I take it you've already met my aides, Lieutenant Pickman and Lieutenant Caden. Yes, I've had the pleasure. Then the gentlemen must have told you why you are here. No, they haven't. Are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. Ever since I've been brought here, all I've been told was to empty my pockets under the desk. Rather reasonable, don't you think? I don't see why. I've never carried any weapons, nor do I have anything to hide. <laughs> Part of a man's makeup and being is usually reflected by what he carries in his pockets. And we must know all about you if you expect us to give you protection. Protection from what? Foreign influences. You wouldn't like to see your country destroyed by such influences, would you? I'm an American. Better yet, a citizen of the American Soviet Republic. Am I correct? I'm an American. Do you feel that you're acting in the interests of your country by being in the employ of the Swiss legation? Yes, I do. Then how do you explain your activities as a spy for a foreign nation? I am not a spy. Now, look here, my good man. We have proof to the contrary. Surely, once you embarked upon those activities, you must have resigned yourself to our eventual discovery of same. It's that very resignation which gives most spies such remarkable courage. I said I am not a spy. Oh, of course you're not. We wouldn't want that expert training of yours to go down the drain so soon, would we now? I like resistance. It's part of the game. Makes my job more interesting. Lieutenant Pickman, get Dr. Grover and stand by with him in the outer office till I call you. Yes, sir. All right, then. Let's have another look at your file. Most illuminating, Mr. Shepard. Most illuminating. Looking at you, one would never suspect this comic strip dash and daring that goes with your record. A tag and... And such an attractive wife, too. Leave her out of this. I can see why. <laughs> if you cooperate, we may not have to touch upon any phase of this. Any phase of what? We're not in the habit of airing our suspect's dirty linen, unless we're given no choice. But I'm sure, with the help of Lieutenant Caden, you'll spare us this embarrassment. Lieutenant, please show Mr. Shepard how to take up the relaxed position against the wall. Uh, Mr. Shepard, would you kindly step over to this wall? <coughs> All right. Now, please face the wall. No, just a little closer, so that the tips of your fingers touch the wall with your outstretched arm. No, no, just your index fingers. There, that's fine. Now, step back. Now, now, keep your heels to the floor. There, that's it. Now, lean forward with the index finger of each hand against the wall so that you can support your weight and maintain your balance. There. Now, slide your feet back another foot. There. Now, isn't that easy? If you say so. And it will become even easier as you keep answering some questions. As a matter of fact, the sooner you tell us about your espionage operation, the earlier you'll be relieved of this uh, silly position. I repeat, I am not a spy. Then how come your wife has already admitted that you are? You're bluffing. You trust her? Implicitly. Why? Because I love her. <laughs> Poor reason. Comfortable? Yes. Good. We don't want you to lose your equilibrium when a wife's honor is at stake. I never questioned her honor. Then how do you explain her informing on you? I don't believe it. It's a lie. Still comfortable? No. Too bad. Especially since you don't seem to understand that we'll consider the circumstances once you admit your guilt. We know that deep down you're one of us. You merely lost your way. No. The confusion, your inner conflict should be blamed, not you. Uh, I can account for all my actions. They're... They're all clear and above board. I have nothing to hide. Oh, there now, Mr. Shepard. You can't switch fingers. Just the index fingers, remember? But they're so swollen. So painful. They can't hold me any. Of course they can. You'd be surprised at a brave man's physical endurance. No. Last week I had a friend of yours here. He stood like this for two full hours. Naturally, with a few interruptions. By the moment he'd regained consciousness, there he'd be, stretching out his fingers like a good little soldier. <laughs> to what do you attribute your wife's actions? What actions? How could you have helped but notice? What 
are you talking about? Say, Caden, do you find it warm in here? Why, no, sir. Strange. Mr. Shepard's shirt seems to be drenched with perspiration. I, I can't anymore. There's a whirl. The, the floor is moving. Caden, the wet towel, quickly. We mustn't have Mr. Shepard faint. Here, give it to me. Just a little cold compress on the neck, Mr. Shepard, and you'll feel better in a jiffy. Uh, 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 that's en enough, please. Uh, that's enough. I... I I, I, I'm fine again. Please, I... Now, where were we? Oh, yes, about that friend of yours. He finally told us all about how he collaborated with you. I, I have not collaborated with anyone. You mean to tell me you don't remember Charles Martin? I... I don't know any Charles Martin. Mr. Shepard seems tired. Let's get him a chair. Uh, there you are, Mr. Shepard. Now, now, let's uh, wake up. I, uh, let's stay lively. Why, what, what do you want? Uh, what do you want? Have a cigarette? Uh, yes, please. Please what? A cigarette. I thought you didn't smoke. Of course I don't. I mean, I do. You just said you didn't, don't I you? I said I don't, but that was because you made me. How could I make you say something you wouldn't want to say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's just it. You don't know your own mind anymore. You may have done some things which you weren't fully aware of. That cigarette. Could I have it, please? Certainly. Why didn't you say so to begin with? Here you are. Match? Yes, th thanks. And what about your wife? <laughs> what about her? Really, Mr. Shepard, you're a fool, a blind fool. But you did admit that you were spying for the Swiss legation, didn't you? Uh, I said nothing of the kind. Oh, that is peculiar. It seems to me that only a minute ago, a certain position against the wall made you think more clearly. Shall we try it again? Oh, please. Please, my, my, my fingers. They, they, they feel like hot irons. Mr. Shepard, uh, these are civilized times. Uh, I wouldn't think of subjecting you to any ordeal without medical attention. Uh, I think... Yes, sir. Please have Lieutenant Pickman bring in Dr. Grover. Yes, sir. Nothing like a doctor's care makes you appreciate the neighborly functions of our modern society. Eh, Mr. Shepard? Yes, sir. What did you say? Uh, I said, yes. Didn't you say something else? I may have said, yes, sir. You may have, don't you know? I do. You do what? You do what? I know that I... I know, I know, I know. We have proof to the we contrary. Proof, the contrary. Have, you need protection, need protection, 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 protection. And such an attractive, such wife. An attractive wife. 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 Now wife. please face the wall. Face, face the wall. Face, face the wall. Face, face, face the wall. Face, face the wall. Face, face, face the wall. You are listening to Delirium, starring Carlton Young. A story of the way things could be if communism took over. A picture of what life would be like under a communist regime in an ordinary American town. A town we call Springfield, USA. I won't! I won't! <laughs> It's all wrong. I was just doing a job. Just a job. That's all right, Mr. Shepard. Everything is going to be just fine. Who are you? Why, I'm Dr. Grover. I just this minute came in. I didn't notice. Of course you didn't. You're upset. Now, you'd like to get well, wouldn't you? I guess so. So, why don't we just dig deep down to the real root of all this trouble, eh? Are you a psychiatrist? Naturally. Uh, there's nothing wrong with my That's mind. That's precisely what I'm here to find out. Remember now, I'm your doctor. Yeah. I must have the truth. Why are you worried about your wife? Oh, I, I, I'm not. You are? Only your subconscious won't let you admit it, eh? Uh, admit what? About your wife and Professor Bradford. Uh, what about them? Calm now, Mr. Shepard. I'm your doctor. We must set aside pride and vanity. Uh, you and I both know you're considering 
Bradford, your best friend. Yeah, but haven't... It hurt to learn about his relationship with your wife, didn't it? Chris? <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> but you're laughing already. What else could I do? You don't expect me to believe this? <laughs> there is nothing to believe. You've known it all along. It's been gnawing at your insides for weeks. That's why you couldn't help yourself. You had to seek some reckless adventure, be a figure of importance in an international intrigue. Your ego needed a shock treatment. It had to be bolstered to overcome its wound. Indeed, Mr. Shepard, that's how spies are born. Yeah. Only we understand the process of birth, the many circumstances which remove the criminal label. Now, you see this paper here? Right. It merely gives the facts. The only thing missing is your signature. Uh, really nothing incriminating about this, just something for the record. Uh, 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 what sign it? Oh, it's your conscience, Mr. Shepard. Your conscience must shed its burden. Isn't that Definitely. correct, Doctor? Definitely. This is the kind of confession that shows no malice, just really. And only the Swiss legation assumes responsibility. Uh, After all, you had accepted your job in good faith, never suspecting that they were misusing you to their easy. diabolic advantage. Yeah, it's easy. Nothing to it. This for uh, relief. No, no, no. I, Do you feel all right? No. Your face seems flushed. You're not worried about your wife, are you? No, I, I just feel hot. My, my head is burning. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's my eyes that are heating it like coal. Would you like to cool off against the wall? Yeah, but... Here, let me take you over to it. No. Remember, there's more no. strength in your fingers no. than in your mind. No, please, not. No. But no. you uh, could. You could I, do I, I it couldn't. now. You're strong enough to protect the legation no. all by yourself, single-handed. No. So what possible harm could a bare wall do you? A strong-willed tower of strength like you? Here, no. now let's put out those arms. No. That's no. fine. Now, no, the, now the, stand the, back. No, the paper. The paper. G g give me the paper. The paper. Give me the paper. <laughs> One, two, three o'clock. Oh, Chris, what am I going to do? Please, Kathy, let me give you a sedative so you can get some rest. Nothing else can be done till morning, and I'm sure by then there'll be a very simple explanation for all this. Oh, I'm so glad you came over. I, I don't know what I would have done without you. Are you sure there was nothing familiar about the voice of that woman? It could have been just a gag played by a friend of yours. Oh, no, no. You know how sharp my sense for voices is. If anything, it betrayed a deliberate, malicious trick. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so frightening. Mike hasn't the makings of a backdoor lover. If there was someone else, I would have read it in his face the day it happened. Hey, wait. I think I heard the front door. Michael, is it you? Hi. Were you expecting someone else? Oh, Michael. Michael, where have you been? Please. Please, Kathy, not now. My... My head, I, uh, I've got to lie down. Oh, Michael, what did they do to you? I knew it must have been them. It, it was all rigged up that way. Rigged up? Uh, who's in the living room? Chris, we've both been waiting for you. Oh? Oh, you had us worried sick. I bet. Michael, what's the matter? Nothing. Michael, it's good to see you. You gave us quite a fright. I did. You look kind of peaked. What on earth happened to you? The long expected. The secret police. Yes, with all the trimmings, the wall and everything. The wall. Tell me, Chris, have you ever faced a wall? Here, Michael, you better lie down for a while. Take your hands off me. My darling, Chris is only trying to help. Like he's helping himself to you? Michael, what are you talking about? Handle him, he's feverish. Have your secrets, huh, even while I'm still in the room. Oh, darling, darling, you're not well, Not please. well. Uh, suit you fine, doesn't it, Chris? Only I'm well enough to... Michael! Stop it! Stop it, you're choking him! Oh, my Michael, please, whatever they made you think it isn't true. What else could you say? Oh, listen, please. They tried to make me believe you were with another woman. They had her call here. Michael, they had her call here. Michael. No. Oh, it isn't true. It, but it is. Uh, I, I, I don't know. They said it. I, uh, I, I, I signed it. I... It, I the confession. Michael. <laughs> I, I, I'm a spy. That's what, the, that's what it said. I, I, I signed it. I, 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 I signed it. Michael. Michael, where are you going? I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Mike, Mike, wait. I, I... Oh, Chris, what are we going to do? I, I'll go and try to bring him back. In the meantime, call Dr. Levin. A fever, the hallucinations that has all the earmarks. Delirium. Yes, yes, a very special kind. You could call it uh, 
menticide, a psychological method of breaking down the mind. You heard him talk about confession, didn't you? Well, menticide breaks a man's willpower, makes him confess to almost anything. Oh, please, Chris, hurry, hurry before he gets away. Too close on his tail. You better slow down a little. He's driving like a madman. Don't want to lose him. Wonder why he left home again. I was just getting settled for the night. <laughs> Maybe his wife kicked him out. Remember the stunt the chief pulled on her? The dame calling? All right, hold on. Here we go again. Hey, he must have spotted us. Yeah. Look, he's no fool. Heading straight for the legation. What do you want to do that for? Oh, kind of a sanctuary, like an island. Foreign territory right in the midst of everything. Okay. We better get him before he gets in. Uh, yeah. All right, come on, there he goes. Look, he can't get in the front door. Yeah, it's too bad. Hey, he's cutting over to the window. Oh, I'll be. Went right through it. I gotta hand it to him. That guy wants his freedom in the worst way. Yeah. What now? Oh, nothing much. Let's have a smoke. A smoke? But you... Relax, relax. There's a bench. Let's go over and sit down. Here. Want one? Yeah, thanks. Well, where do we go from here? No place. He's got to come out of there sooner or later. You have just heard what would happen to any American under a communist regime if he were employed by a foreign legation. You think this could not happen? It did happen in communist-dominated Bulgaria. It did happen to Michael Shipkov, who was employed by the U.S. legation. Michael Shipkov was arrested and forcibly persuaded by the secret police to sign a false confession of espionage. After the interrogation, he returned to the legation to make a written report of what he had been forced to do. He was later sentenced to 15 years in prison. You've been listening to If Freedom Failed, starring Carlton Young as Michael Shepard in Delirium. Don Randolph was Bradford, Dan O'Herlihy was Heston, and Marjorie Hochelle was Catherine. Others in the cast were Paul Richards, Faye Baker, Michael Mark, Byron Kane, Jim Nusser, Lamont Johnson, and David Duval. Music was composed by Earl Lawrence, with musical direction by Michel Perrier. Delirium was written for If Freedom Failed by Peter Brook. Produced and directed by Will Scott. Sergeant Lloyd Iyer speaking. This program has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Music